So the first little sequence I have completely worked out. We open up in the cellar, pulling back from her as she comes out with the machine gun. James Gunn is the perfect choice to direct this film. Boom, boom, that's good. Boom, that's good. If you're gonna do a comic book movie, he's definitely the guy you would want. Bam, and then we can cut to this. When it comes to comic books, I don't know that there's a bigger fan than James Gunn. Okay, great, let's do it again. Reading his script, you could see that and you could feel that, and so it's nice to know that you're in good hands. This is great. I'm an enormous comic book fan. I also know how silly they are. <laughs> to create a movie like Suicide Squad, which gives these silly things, the sort of reverence and love that they deserve, treating all of this nonsense as if it was absolutely real. That, to me, is the secret of the Suicide Squad, and that's what makes it fun to make. Bam, 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 bam. That's a lot of, that's a lot of killing. Describing my brother James's style is not easy. In some ways, it almost feels like a Christmas tree. It's got this strong trunk of story, but then all these lovely and weird ornaments all over the tree that kind of draw our attention away. But it's really the story that's holding the whole thing together. Cut. Great. Cut. Thank you, guys. Suicide Squad was exceptionally exciting to me because I was emboldened by Warner Brothers' faith in me to do whatever we wanted with this movie. Telling the story in the sort of outlandish way that we tell it, killing whatever characters we wanted to kill. One of the things I said, well, it needs to be R-rated. It is a war film at its heart. Give us a beat to aim a gun in case something's coming. Okay, action! He's this force of nature when it comes to filmmaking, and one of his great gifts is his ability to make the irredeemable character someone worthy of redemption. All of you guys have to move to get right with him. Yeah. When I was trying to figure out what characters I was gonna put in the movie, you know, you, you type in dumbest supervillains. Polka Dot Man is at the top of that list. Can you make it seem like they just opened when I did this? Because otherwise I'd have to pop them. I'm like, if we can make Polka Dot Man work, then the movie will work. It's the magic of the fact that he can take a group of folks that I don't know or care about and make me know and care about them is extremely impressive. That's the mark of a good storyteller. I'm going to Easter eggs there. Double down, he'll playing cards hey, off his face and throws them at people. Of course, calendar man. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm always interested in tales of people who have not lived their best lives and have an opportunity to perhaps become something better. I'm a motherfucking stupid! His writing is always full of surprises. You lean into the movie because you just don't know where it's going to go. Action. Hey. Dubois. Hey, flag. Cut. Working with James is always challenging. He writes huge scripts with a lot of big explosions, battle sequences. James doesn't like to do anything that's easy. So, like, easy is not in the book of James Gunn filmmaking. This movie has more practical effects than all the other movies I've worked on combined. Pretty happy with that. It has more practical sets than all of the movies I've ever worked on combined, both on location and the gigantic, enormous sets that Beth Mickle has built. Then we cut to him shooting. I've never experienced anything like it before, but that's also because it hasn't been done before. I was told that these are actually the biggest set builds that Warner Brothers has ever done. So my guess is that they're probably some of the biggest set builds ever built. Okay, now turn right back around, everybody go back to one. We shot in Panama. The city of Cologne is brightly colorful and beautiful, but it's also very dirty and gritty, and I think this was something that matched the aesthetic of the film very well. Perfect, Archie. Gracias. Panama was amazing. I remember thinking it's just gonna look wicked on screen. Everywhere you looked, it was incredible architecture and beautiful colors. And it was hot too, which I think adds something, that kind of vibe. Shooting this giant battle with hundreds of people in the Starro masks, and it was a real difficult shoot, but also a pretty joyous one. I really enjoyed watching how he works. You know, watching his other films, you kind of sit there and go, how did they do that? You're just gonna walk forward and shoot the fuck out of him. And then when you're in a film with someone like James Gunn, you're sort of watching a master at work. Yeah. Play it from the top, will you? It's amazing. It's amazing. The slow-mo hero walk, they're playing the music that's gonna be playing in the movie while you're walking. It's too much fun. <laughs> music is incredibly important, and we play it on set, and that guides the scene. Playback and action! 
it's really cool. It makes you step into the world on the other side of the edit. You're kind of seeing the movie while you're in it. Cut! Cut! James has a very uh, 1930s style of directing at times, where he has a microphone and he goes, now do it like this. Now, now you're angry, less angry. Go to grab it and pretend like you're gonna do it, but don't do it. He's sort of right there with you in the scene. You know, he interrupts and adds stuff and you're changing the scene as you're filming it right then and there. Do you hear this? Yes, I hear you. Yeah, okay, well, I'd like you to go up the steps and then the top of the steps, hand over thinker to peacemaker. I love that. Thank you, fantastic. He never pulls the microphone away from his mouth, so you can hear him laughing. It sounds like God's laugh, because it's all around you. You know he's enjoying it. Okay, let's do it again from the top. People are genuinely having fun because he's fun. It starts from the top. Ready for work? Go we'll kill some people. They do that every morning. James had very interesting ways to keep the mood light. Are you getting this? Yes, sir. You did a poor job. In I agree. Hey, maybe this time you could do a good job. Yep. As opposed to doing a shoot. I'm sucking so hard. I'm just happy to be here, you know. Participation medal. You're ruining my movie. Yes, ruining, yeah, I heard that as well. I didn't know if you said movie or movie, but it's movie. It's about the film. Uh, but seriously, yes. He does keep a fun set, but in actuality, it's a function of tons and tons and tons of preparation. I feel like the most stuff I made by my own hands. <laughs> One of my favorite high points of the movie was tightening these bolts on. It really is just all me. Remember when I bought that food dye and I created a computer program, put this tile in? That took a little while. James is pretty incredible at knowing exactly what he wants. That's interesting, because the behind the scenes, I me knocking dust off Daniela's hair. And he's so prepared. We get all these individual shots. I think if you uh, was to create like a cyborg, best, dopest human person to realize this film, it would be a James Gunn. Perfect, cut. It really has been a dream come true for everybody involved to be able to make this movie in this manner with this group of people. <laughs> I have loved The Suicide Squad since I was very young. They're one of my favorite group of comic book heroes, anti-heroes, villains. And this has been truly the, the greatest, most exciting journey of my life making this film. That's a wrap on The Suicide Squad! Yeah!